Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a skincare video as you can probably tell from the title. We're going to be talking about sunscreens today. We're going to be talking about some of the common myths around sunscreens and why you really need a sunscreen all the year round in your skincare routine. For me, I think I discovered um, the importance of wearing sunscreen regularly around the age of 21 which was also the time when I had just started blogging uh, and I can confidently say that just regular use of sunscreen has helped in um, improving my skin tone and also in uh, preventing a lot of damage so yeah sunscreen is super super important but let's dive into some more detail and some uh, common misconceptions around sunscreens. So I've got my notes here with me. So in case you see me looking down, that's what it is. Um, so number one, you only need sunscreen in the summers. So while it's true that sunlight is at its most intense in the summer, it is really present throughout the year, even though the sun may not be as strong in the cooler months. So when you're skipping sunscreen, you're making your skin more vulnerable to not just UVB damage, which causes tanning and burning, but also premature aging, which is caused by the UVA component of the sun's rays. So no matter the season, make sure you put on your sunscreen. Number two, higher the SPF, the more effective it is. Again, this is not true. Um, like I mentioned in the previous point, the radiation from the sun, the UV radiation, um, has two components, UVA and UVB. A is the one responsible for aging and B is the one responsible for burning. So SPF only denotes the protection you get from the UVB segment of the sun's rays. So it's not an indication of um, how much protection you're getting from the UVA component. So what you need in a sunscreen is broad spectrum and that means that it's going to give you protection both from the UVA and the UVB component and usually you see that in the form of either the packaging will say broad spectrum or you would have a PA triple plus or four plus rating next to the SPF. Also the SPF number denotes um, a factor which can be multiplied by a factor of six or eight depending on your skin tone and it denotes actually the amount of time that you're going to uh, be protected for when you're in the sun. For the last few weeks I've been testing out these two new sunscreens from Minimalist which is an active based Indian affordable skincare brand and these tick all the boxes in terms of protection. I will talk about these a little more um, later in the video. Number three, you don't need a sunscreen if your moisturizer or your foundation has got SPF in it. This is again not true and this can actually give you a false sense of security. Like we talked about earlier, you need broad spectrum protection. So even if your foundation or your moisturizer has got a bit of SPF, it still doesn't give you any protection from the UVA component. So um, yeah, that protection that you're getting from a moisturizer or a foundation with SPF is very, very little. Um, to get proper protection, you need your sunscreen to have an even film over your skin so it needs to be used in a sufficient quantity but when you have a moisturizer or a foundation you may not be using enough quantity for it to actually double up as an effective sunscreen so don't get lured into um, uh, that uh, false sense of security if you've got a moisturizer or foundation with SPF still use your sunscreen and then your uh, moisturizer or your foundation can act as like um, a second layer of protection but your sunscreen needs to be your primary mode of protection. Number four, chemical sunscreens take time to act whereas physical sunscreens act instantly. Again, this is not true at all. There are a lot of uh, myths and false information around physical and chemical sunscreens. Um, a lot of um, information you might read on the internet saying that chemical sunscreens are bad because they absorb the sunlight, whereas physical sunscreens are safer or better because they reflect the UV radiation. Whereas the fact is that majority of protection, both from chemical and physical sunscreens, 
means comes from absorption of UV radiation. So you can't really say that one is better or safer than the other. It's really um, what works for you, what suits you. I personally prefer sunscreens which are a mix of both chemical and physical filters. And both type of sunscreens need that 15 to 20 minute time window to form an even film on your skin that's going to give you proper protection. So yes, you need to put on your sunscreen at least 15 minutes before um, you're going to step out or you know when um, you're getting ready in the morning. And number five, one application of sunscreen is enough to last you the entire day. Again, this is not true. The ingredients in your sunscreen degrade over time, especially if you're exposed to the sun. So if you're in direct sunlight, your sunscreen is degrading a lot faster. If you are indoors, if you're not directly in sunlight, you don't need to reapply through the day. But if you are directly in the sun, if you're outdoors, you do need to reapply every two to three hours in order to maintain that protection. So I hope the points I covered helped you in some way and if there were any um, confusions you had around sunscreens, I hope they addressed that. Now I want to talk about the two sunscreens from The Minimalist which I had mentioned earlier in the video. So a few things I really liked about these. Number one, the packaging. It's sturdy, it's robust, uh, the pump makes it hygienic. To use and um, it's an opaque bottle it's going to keep um, the integrity of the ingredients intact and I feel like they're quite travel safe as well um, nice sleek bottles not bulky not too heavy in terms of consistency these are not too drying they are not very greasy either I feel like texture and consistency is very very important because if you don't like how the product feels on your skin you're not going to use it and I think we've all uh, been in that situation where we've got a full bottle of sunscreen lying around but we just don't like how it feels on the skin so we don't end up using it so um, we've got the SPF 50 which um, feels a little lighter to me so if you've got combination or oily skin um, I think this one will work better see how quickly that disappears into the skin even though when you pump it out it looks like quite whitish but the moment you blend it and you just give it like 15 seconds it just sinks into the skin um, like I said it's not tacky greasy but it's not like completely dry or matte either now the SPF 60 is just a little bit creamier so for those of you who've got dry skin I think this is going to work a little better. It feels a little more moisturizing than the SPF um, 51 but it's same in terms of it's not going to leave any white cast and it's pretty quick to absorb so you don't have to like wait around for it to sink into your skin properly. Both of these are broad spectrum and they contain photostable filters which means that the ingredients that are giving you the protection don't completely break down when they are exposed to the sun. They also work well under makeup. You can see um, the finish after blending it out. There's no white cast. Um, the feel on the skin is just very skin like and comfortable so your makeup is going to blend really easily. Another really important thing it doesn't sting the eyes. I've had uh, I've tried quite a lot of sunscreens which tend to make my eyes really sensitive and ever since I've had my LASIK done um, earlier in this year my eyes have become a lot more sensitive and you need to use your sunscreen around your eye area as well especially if you've got dark circles so you need a sunscreen that's not going to irritate or sting your eyes and both of these actually um, work quite nicely in the eye area as well coming to some ingredients uh, both of these are boosted with antioxidants to soothe and repair the skin after sun exposure SPF 50 has got a vitamin blend of vitamins a B and F and then SPF, the other one, the SPF 61 has got uh, silymarin, which is um, 
derived from milk thistle extracts and again it's a really strong antioxidant and antioxidants are uh, really one of the best category of ingredients you could have in your sunscreen. Now another thing I was really impressed by um, when I was reading about these sunscreens was that these have been properly tested for the accuracy of their SPF. Like a lot of brands can make claims for SPF 50, 60, I've even seen SPF 100, SPF 90, but do they really have the data or the tests to back that up? In this case, Minimalist has done independent um, uh, testing with a lab called Mascot Spin Control. I didn't really know much about it but I did a bit of reading and um, it's a lab which complies with European guidelines which are um, really the strictest uh, guidelines when it comes to skincare from around the world so yeah this lab uh, did 18 rounds of testing and um, they were able to test for accurate SPF which uh, makes me feel just a bit more uh, confident in using these sunscreens so overall these are well researched well formulated tested properly and it's not just about the protection they are boosted with a host of other ingredients that helps in repairing and calming the skin after uh, sun exposure and the best thing is that these are not super expensive so taking all of this into account um, i think uh, this is a really good option if you're in the market for a good sunscreen that's going to um, work well with makeup something that's not going to feel uncomfortable greasy heavy on the skin and something that you can use the entire year definitely check these out and that's all for this video i hope this was helpful for you in case you've tried these sunscreens i'd love to know what you thought so let me know in the comment section thank you so much for watching and i will see you soon in my next video bye